so uh, the feedback I've gotten so far is people said we want to see more of the city and where you live and you know the streets and geography and all that so I decided I'm going to take you on a little walk today over to a park where I work out um, so this is my apartment complex and I'm going to come out to the front courtyard here. It's pretty nice. Um, one thing I was kind of concerned about is I know from my passport video, if I make these uh, videos where I kind of walk and talk, they end up being pretty shaky. So I don't know if this is tolerable. Uh, if you can't stand it, let me know, and I'll try and you know only use this when I'm uh, you know doing station, at least somewhat stationary or standing there and showing you things. Um, but yeah, I actually got a little ear cam, it's called a look -see, that I actually can just wear on my ear and walk around and, uh, what I see is what you see. Um, so, any hue, um, let's go ahead and get out here, oh, gracias, somebody at the gatehouse there just buzzed me open, buzzed it right open for me. Um, so, um, so this is the street I live on here, it's called Pedro Torres. If you look at it on uh, Google Maps, you're not going to see these white lines, these white solid lines in the street. Um, those, what's kind of a little bit different about this street is you can see down this way, um, those cars are parked on the side of the street. Here it's got these solid double lines in the middle, and people park in the middle of the street. Uh, it basically opens up both sides. It kind of makes sense for a smaller street um, so that there's room for the, uh, for the cars, you know, if you have bigger cars or whatever. So, um, let's see if I can get a good vantage point here. Um, so far, Santiago kind of reminds me of the valley, like L.A., uh, San Fernando Valley area where I lived for the past four years. Um, you can see if I can get an angle on it over here. If you see in the distance, you might be able to see the top of a mountain over those trees. And then we don't have a vantage point, but on the other side here, there's a mountain over there. So it's the same kind of thing where you got mountains on all sides, and you're in a a uh, warmer tropical or uh, uh, deserty environment. This isn't deserty, but you know it, it's warmer, surrounded by mountains, and uh, fairly temperate uh, weather-wise. So, um, yeah, I'll uh, try and do some commentary throughout the video, um, you know, try not to talk to myself too much as I'm passing people, because um, as you can see here, not only am I talking to myself, I am wearing toe shoes. So I'm sure I'm quite the sight to the native Chilean. Uh, these are the cheap uh, Skeletos that I picked up. I was going to get uh, Vibram Five Fingers, but I couldn't find them at a store. Uh, they're the better brand, but... Um, yeah, they're the better brand, but I, I wasn't able to find them, and I saw these at a mall, and they were like half off. So I picked these up for so cheap, I was like, alright. Why not? Um, so let's move on to some of the questions here that I was getting. Um, have I been to Gold's Gold's Chile? Um, I have not been there yet. Um, I have been to Viña del Mar. We actually went to the beach last weekend. Um, and that was cool. Um, it was a beach. I'm actually not much of a beach guy. I, I think I, I went once briefly when I was in, in all four years in California. I went to the beach maybe once. 
Um, but yeah, it was cool. Um, and it was a beach. And let's see here. Um, have, oh, and as far as uh, Gulch Gulch Chile, no, I haven't been there, but I'm actually going there this weekend. Um, with someone else, as it turns out, there's actually another guy that um, he just emailed me uh, a couple nights ago. It's another guy from the the Free Domain Radio forum, uh, the Gold Subscribers Forum. So there are now actually three of us in Santiago at the moment from uh, FDR Gold uh, forums. So um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there this weekend. I'll definitely shoot some video and uh, have some commentary on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, where am I exactly? Well, I told you the street. It's Pedro Torres. And Santiago is divided up into what they call communas, which, of course, sounds like community or something. And that's exactly what it is. They're little, they're distinct neighborhoods. Uh, distinct neighborhoods or communities. Like in LA or New York, you might have um, LA or New York. You might have. Uh, you know, like uh, Koreatown or Little Italy or the Bronx or something like that. Drop my paper. Uh, drop my paper is not a community, but you... Yeah, never mind. Um, so, yeah, that, they're divided up into little communities. The one that I'm in is called Nunoa. Um Hopefully these guys won't run me over. It's called Nunoa, Um And... I don't know exact not sure exactly what it's known for. It might actually be known for its distinction might be like restaurants and things like that. Uh I'll have to double check, but I mean I haven't been around that much of it. Um the one the other one that's pretty close, I stayed in a hostel for the first couple nights that was in Providencia, which is right next to Nunoa, or right above it, just north. And Providencia is known as it's basically the business district like all the you know big businesses there's the the, the tallest building um in chile uh at the bottom of is a at the bottom of the tower there's a mall and it's the tallest building uh, in chile I, actually i believe it's the tallest building in south america um you could double check that but yeah so that's providencia and nuno and there, there's several more but um yeah, yeah, that's where I am. Um, let's see. Restaurant food. What is the cost of restaurant food uh, in comparison to perhaps the United States? Um, about the same. Yeah, from what I can tell, uh, it's pretty close to the same prices on uh, at restaurants. Um, although it sounds like the... the uh, standard tip or the expected tip is only about 10%. So um, the gratuity expected is not quite as expensive. Uh, let's see here. Um, it's interesting, the stop signs here say pare instead of alto. And there's actually a lot of differences between... Um, like Spanish, Spanish, and um, Chilean Spanish. Chilean Spanish is actually quite different. Um, well, it, I mean, it's similar. They, they just use there's a lot of different words they they switch out. Um, and sometimes native Spanish speakers have a little trouble trying to understand uh, Chileans when they come here. Um, and I saw a doggy over there. I was going to actually make a comment about the dogs here. Um, I don't know if we'll see one here, but it's very, very common to see German shepherds. Like, everybody has a German shepherd, and they're always behind these gates. Obviously, you know, protecting the, uh, uh, protecting the house, 
but they're very popular. Um, and what I've noticed is when I walk by, the, the dogs don't bother me. They don't jump at the gate. They don't bark. They don't get excited. Um, so it's probably, it's just a sign of trained dogs. Like everybody has like a, a trained security German shepherd um, that they have behind the gates here outside their homes. Um, let's see. The, oh, oh, along the, the lines of restaurant food. Um, when you're ordering water at a restaurant, you got to be, it's actually a much more complicated affair than you would normally realize. Like, um, basically, if you just order water, you are, it's very likely you're going to get carbonated water. Um, if you, so the, the key is seen gas or cone gas. Gas meaning, you know, the, the carbonation. So, um, yeah, it, and, and then just to get tap, tap water is actually more difficult. I, you have to specifically say, like, un vaso de agua, I believe it's de la lleva. I think it's, or llave, might be llave, uh, agua de la llave. Someone, you can double check me on that, but um, in any case, you got to specifically ask for that if you want to get um, water that's just in a glass, you know, from the tap or whatever. So it's very difficult to get water that you don't have to pay for at a restaurant. Um, yeah, I seem to remember my Spanish teachers telling us that about Latin America. It's not a Chilean thing. It's a Latin American thing. Um, police, police presence, what do they look like? What do they do? Or do they bother you? Um, I mean, I haven't been here that long, but... Um, yeah, basically the police look like uh, it, they're. It's not like local precincts. It's essentially military. Um, they they appear to be like national guardsmen. Um, and I think I think that is a common uh, Latin American thing. You know that they have some sort of national military arm that is essentially the police everywhere. Um, as far as what they do, no, they don't seem to bother anyone much. Um, most people report, you know, not really having to deal with speeding tickets and stuff like that a lot. They don't, um, you know, they dress the part, but they're just kind of there for show. Um, and I mean, I was talking about, I was talking about the, uh, ooh, there's the, there's the street, Avenue Echenique, I think that's how you say it, Chin, Echenique, uh, this is where the park is, um, but yeah, I was talking, that other video, I was talking about the, uh, the California story where a guy gets hit with a, a jaywalking ticket. Um, that obviously doesn't exist here. Um, the, like, people watch the little, little, little red guy, you know, little red and, gl red and green, uh, walk signs, and, um, I mean, they'll watch it, but if it's red, they'll just look for cars, and then if they don't see cars, they'll just go. Uh, in the United States, people tend to pile up on those lights and actually wait. There's no waiting for that crap here. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, and cops will be right there, you know, they, they don't bother anybody. Um, so here's one of the parks. And, yeah, dead ahead we're gonna, I mean, you're seeing some of the graffiti I was talking about. Uh, this is actually a nicer park, you know, but you do just kind of see this graffiti everywhere. Um, and then the other thing I've kind of noticed about the parks in the public areas, uh, all of the parks, they have these little uh, exercise machines, which I haven't really used, but, like, that's sort of a... Like, here's just a really simple version of uh, what are they called... Uh, I can't think of the word for these, the, uh, whatever you call them. Um, this is like, 
I think this just, one just use your, uses your body weight. So you kind of pull yourself up, sit on the seat, and then you're pulling your own weight up. It's really, it's extremely easy. Um, these ones kind of confuse me. Um, you just kind of put your feet up there, and then you swing side to side. You just kind of go like this. I'm not sure what that's supposed to do, to be quite honest. I see a lot of women doing that. Maybe it tones their hips or something. Some kind of bench press thing. Actually, I wonder... Or leg press? I wonder how this works. What happens when... Oh, it just pushes you out. Okay. It just pushes me out. And the seat swivels. Um... And this just looks kind of like a poor man's treadmill or something similar to that. Uh, man, I can't think of the word for those things. When you run along and all that. This looks like sort of a... I assume this is a... How does this work? You just pull yourself back? Okay, so I guess you just pull yourself back. Yeah, there's nothing to that either. There's no... Uh, I don't see myself breaking a sweat on those. And who the hell knows what this is. What do I do? Spin the wheel? Wax on, wax off? Maybe it's the wax on, wax off machine. Um, but no, for my workouts, um, I just need a pull-up bar, so I just smack the kids off the monkey bars and use those. I'd right, find maybe I don't smack the kids off the monkey bars, but they're usually unoccupied. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and start my workout here, and uh, that may be it for this little journey. Oh, there's some mountains over there. I was talking about this side. You can see the mountains in the distance there. So that what was that's what was sort of behind me when I was walking up, and there's more on this side over here. Um, so anyway, I'll... Uh, probably cut this out here and uh, unless I see something interesting that may be the end of this little journey. Oh, and there's there's a poor man's treadmill over there. It kind of looks like a treadmill. There's actually rollers that kid's getting on. It's funny, there's actually like metal rollers that you, that you run along. But anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, so yeah, I... Uh, that's just something else interesting here. I'll uh, try and grab another clip of something else later. So that's it for now. 500, 501, 502, 503, 504, 505. Maybe the workout didn't quite go down exactly like that. But uh, turn this back on again. Just to catch another quick observation here concerning dogs. I did see one of those German Shepherds around here. Let me see if I can find him again. He's running around. But basically, I almost never see dogs on a leash. Like here at the park, even walking down the street. Leashes are kind of a rare thing. Um, let me show you. Up this way. Yeah, there he is. There's... One dog up close, he's on a leash, but that German Shepherd is in the distance by the bush. You may not have seen him. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's just kind of running around doing his own thing. There's one on the leash. But that German Shepherd, I'm pretty sure, belongs to this trio of girls up here. What a doggy. This trio of girls up here that's sitting on the ground. They walked in with... Oh, oh there's one. Is that the same one? There's their German Shepherd. He's kind of their... Makes an excellent bodyguard for them, I'm sure. Um, Look if he's the same one. I think he is. But yeah, then he just goes... Runs around wherever he wants to. Um, yeah, it's just... Kind of not a big deal. I mean, a German Shepherd without a leash? Around in public? I mean, that's... People call 911 back in the States. We will get a serious fine for that. Most likely. Even the pets in South America have a greater degree of freedom than pets in the U.S. Um, 
Yeah, oh, the other thing is, speaking of, uh, wait a minute, oh, see, there's not, now I'm seeing all kinds of dogs on a leash. They're making a liar out of me. But it, it may also just be that trained thing, like those trained German Shepherds. Um, you know, don't gotta worry about, don't gotta worry about leashes and such. Um, sounds like a bigger dog, I bet this is another one. Yep, another German Shepherd. Getting excited about the other dog. Yeah, if it's, uh, if it's just a person walking by, like if I was just walking by. I've, I've walked by that dog before. It doesn't bother you. Um, but there was another question here that I forgot to get to. I'm going to get past some of these cars here. Um, Alright, so yeah, final question. I almost forgot to ask, which is quite important in my opinion. I mean, if you ask me, you gotta you gotta know these things. Uh, how about them women? Are the chicks hot? That is a specific question I've gotten. And uh, yes, we must investigate this. To be perfectly honest, um, I I honestly think that. I do see a higher ratio of attractive women uh, when I walk around Santiago, especially in the busier parts. Um, I don't know if it might be just sort of a big city bias, uh, where we just have a lot more people. Um, but I don't know, I mean, I was in the LA area, yeah, I saw attractive women from time to time, but I do think I see a higher ratio on average here. Now, uh, I think I saw this guy on the way here. He probably thinks I'm completely insane. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, now, keep in mind, um, I do kind of have a weakness for brunettes. I am a fan of the raven-haired vixens. So, it could be that I just, you know, being in uh, South America is just a good idea for me. But with that possible bias in mind, um, yeah, you know, I think, I think I do see some attractive people overall. Um, high, higher than average, higher than the averages I'm used to. But um, we'll see, and we'll also see, you know, if I get out into other areas that are not, you know, big metropolitan centers. Um, we'll see if that changes. So, um, any further questions, please submit them. That'll, it'll be good to, uh, it's an easy way for me to pack in more material. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Oh, look at these parking jobs, by the way. This is something else you see. Uh, pretty common. Uh, just kind of you know, no one else is using the sidewalk right now, right? Keeps the, uh... Oh, jeez, holy crap. That was a, that was a near miss. Uh, great. Now I look stupid on my own video. Oh, well, it's more entertaining that way. But yeah, hey, just take the sidewalk and uh, keep the roads open, right? So, alright, there you go, that's it for now. Apartment. Um, doesn't look like my host is here right now, so I figured I'd uh, show you around my uh, abode. One of these mine? No, I lost my sunglasses, but oh well. Um, so yeah, this is the apartment here. Um, walk over to the kitchen. This is where I'm staying at the moment. Um, I mentioned they don't have dryers and they just sort of hang everything up. This is a clothes drying rack. It, it was actually it was always set up with clothes until today. Someone must have just uh, put all those clothes away, but this thing's set up and they just dry here. I hadn't seen one of these yet till I got here. It's, uh, I guess it's just like a dehumidifier that keeps the, the air around the drying rack, um, you know, dry. Um, let's see, now there's this interesting, uh, interesting faucet configurations. 
Um, here's a stove. It actually, you actually have to light it. It doesn't have a lighter, so you got to use matches. That's a little extra step I'm not quite used to. Um, you saw the living room. Um, my room is the first one right up here. Um, and yeah, it's small, but it works. That's all I really need. I brought all this crap with me. Um, oh, something a very important thing to note here. The electrical outlets here in Chile are like this. So it's usually either two or three three prongs like this, and they plug into these guys. So if you're bringing electronics and you come down here, you got to have adapters, something like this, to actually plug them in. Second thing that's also very important, the voltage here in Chile is different. It's In the United States, it's like 120 volts. Uh, here, it's 240. Now, most of my electronic devices are fine because they'll have some sort of little brick or something here, and you read it, and you see what it's rated for, and most of them will say, um, you know, 120 to 240. So 240 is the upper limit that most electronic devices can handle uh, if you just get an adapter to plug them in, uh, but not all of them. So be careful of that, because like my, my PS4 um, will not take the 240. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely not going to risk harming the precious. Um, so I'll need to get a uh, an adapter, like a, a transformer, like a transformer. Or a, I don't know if that's the, the exact the right term or the right gadget, but something to, to change electricity over. So you and you can pick all this stuff: these adapters, the transformers, or whatever at, at the malls or you know, the malls will carry them or electronic stores. Um, so this is my room, and you'll notice a lot of stuff like this is not a, the newest building, right? So. A lot of stuff I see here in South America is sort of uh, just little construction things are either just like half-assed or half-broken. Um, you know, like for example, in my room here, this little, this awesome light fixture job. Um, you know, and like outlets kind of sticking halfway out of the wall. Just little stuff like that, and doors and keys and latches and locks and um, you know, everything. Just a lot of stuff just seems kind of. Like I said, either half-assed or half-broken. Um, although Chile kind of has a tale of two cities thing going on. Like, I'm sure this, I mean, this building was built decades ago. Um, but right outside my window here, um, there's, constru there's a construction crane and they're putting up, you know, apartment complexes. There, there's going to be one right here. Um, so, you know, brand new stuff's going up. You, you see that all over the place, these construction cranes. Um, and construction projects sprouting up. So, and that's why I may, uh, like after I'm done here, I'll, I'll probably, like toward the end of February, I'll probably try a different apartment. Um, maybe find a newer building, because personally, I mean, I'm, I'm a little more interested in um, what the new Chile has to offer. You know, that's the reason some of us are interested in coming down here is the, the budding fruits of capitalism, you know, in its early stages rather than, you know, the uh, decades old Chile of communist dictatorship. Uh, we got two bathrooms right here. The, uh, find the light. Um, the washer is actually in this bathroom. Uh, this is the clothes washer. I, at the hospital I was at, this is the exact way. The, the washer looked the exact same way. So they look a little different. There's no thing in the center. Um, I saw this thing in there last time I went to wash my clothes. I need to ask my host what this is. It seems like an agitator of some kind. I don't know if this is supposed to be in there to help agitate the clothes or if it's something entirely different. But yeah, they're just, that, that's just what they look like. Uh, looking lit, weird looking lids. Um, no big deal, you know. Typical bathroom and uh, again we have this little sort of lever on the top kind of faucet. Um, I don't think there's really anything that um, yeah, nothing else is really that interesting about the apartment, I don't think. Um, but yeah, that's it. So there's the apartment, and uh, I'll uh, see if there's anything else I, I need to show you before releasing the next video. So there you go.